It's very important for native landscapers to educate themselves. There's no such thing as the ideal natural landscape. There's the ideal natural landscape for your land. And um, it requires, um, you know, taking advantage of the resources that are out there. The resources include local garden clubs, websites, and books. You need to study those. Uh, botanic gardens and other stuff often have classes on native plant gardening, community colleges, those are very important. And with the knowledge that you get from the books and the websites and the resources, and the knowledge you have of your own yard, you start making judgments as to what plants to put in and what plants not to put in. This one has little blue stem, it had some rutabecchi on it, some black-eyed Susans which we've replaced. Uh, some fountain grass, some prostate junipers, had some yucca and some potted plants. The easiest small step to start with is to take an existing bed of flowers. Let's say you have a tulip bed in the front, okay? Take out those tulips and put in some natives. Put in some coneflowers, put in some goldenrod, put in some black-eyed Susans. They have color, they attract butterflies, and, and, and get your, your toe wet in the natural landscape by taking an existing flower bed and turning that into a bed of native flowers. In choosing um, planting plugs or native seeds, the biggest consideration would be the uh, cost because seed is less expensive. Uh, but then you also have to consider time. It's going to take longer for seed to establish than if you were installing plugs. The next thing I would suggest is that you take the edges of your yard and start rounding them. So in the back of your yard, you've got two fences that come together and create a 90 degree angle. Cut that on a, on a slope and take that corner and naturally landscape that with native plants and put some grasses in there in the corners. and then. Go along the fence line and contour it a little bit and start putting some plantings against that. And if you start from the edges and work in, and you take the existing beds and work out, you'll learn that over a course of seasons, you'll become comfortable uh, with the native landscaping and what you're doing. In terms of reduced maintenance, you don't have to mow every week. You don't have to provide the fertilizer, the pesticides, herbicides uh, that you do to maintain a ornamental landscape. But you do have specific maintenance requirements to get your native plants established. You have to be sure to trim back the weeds on a regular basis and make sure that you're allowing sunlight to your seeds and your small native plants so they can continue to grow. And as the native plants start to grow, you'll see less invasion from the weed species. So by the about the third year, you really will end up with a low maintenance landscape. Burning a native landscape, especially a prairie, actually stimulates its root growth so that it can absorb even more pollutants. And as it stimulates the root growth, it's storing those pollutants down in the, um, in the ground, in the subsurface. So burning a prairie once every two or three years may release you know, some carbon dioxide and some particulates. Um, but really, not all of that mass on the surface is actually gonna burn. You're really only gonna see the leaves and the flowers and whatnot burning. At the same time, you know, that's gonna allow a lot more pollution to be absorbed and sequestered in the ground. Comparing that with maintaining a landscape by mowing it, constantly having emissions and gasoline usage, and then the energy and the um, emissions from the water distribution and watering. Um, actually doing controlled burn once every two or three years is nothing compared to our typical maintenance and the air pollution that it uh, generates. If you think that having a natural landscape means a no maintenance landscape, that's a misconception. Uh, but it is a labor of love.